The 6.5 is on the road here in San Diego for Cisco Live 2025. Dan, no surprises about AI. We heard a lot about AI, but we also heard about the importance of security and observability and trust. Yeah, and of course the network. Can't, can't go to a Cisco event and not hear about the network. But, uh, you can't. It, you know, you said no surprises, and I would say from the standpoint of it being very focused on the AI roadmap, absolutely no surprises. When it comes to the amount of announcements, the enthusiasm, the excitement, and sort of the you know, really powerful messaging that Cisco has come out with. And you and I have both kind of said, hey, yeah. it took a little while, but walking away from today's keynote, and depending when you're watching it, yeah. um, very encouraging. That's right. And whenever you're moving big amounts of data around and you have new people trying to break in and steal your stuff, uh, observability, security, and the two are really interlocked here. And Cisco made this massive uh, acquisition of Splunk, and they've really done a good job uh, integrating um, the company together. And we'd like to go through that today, and we'd like to welcome uh, Kamal to the 6.5. To Thank go through you so this. Much. Yeah. Good to see you. Amazing. Good. But Thank but you. the most important question though is what does your t-shirt say? Here? Okay. Here's a reveal. Okay. It says Commander data. Report to the Cisco symbol, bridge. Bridge. This is yes. cool. Dan, why don't we get some cool t-shirts? I have them. Do you? At home. You're yeah, not, I ordered not them. sharing them with me? Oh, uh, you paid for them. Okay, oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, we'll get you Splunk t-shirts, and you should wear them. Cool. I would wear them. Uh, we Fantastic. did some very cool things Definitely over the year them. with years of Splunk. Uh, F1 races. I've got lots of great swag. Shout out to the person that made that happen. Won't, won't, uh, won't say names in public. She may not appreciate that. She might like Maybe it. Maybe she does. Know. Maybe she, she does. So talk a little bit about yeah. um, the, 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 the coming together. I yeah. mean, it was fast and furious, but it's been about a year now. Yep. But like it, it's been very impressive. A lot of times when a company as big as Cisco buys a company as big as Splunk, people are like, oh, that's going to take forever. It hasn't. That's been amazing, actually. Yeah. And there's three parts to it. Part one, now Cisco has made sure that Splunk continues to fire on all cylinders. The roadmap, the delivery, the timing, everything just smooth. No interference there. Really made sure that we are successful. So it's really important. Companies come together. Sometimes the big companies start to say, do this, do that. Cisco has been just absolutely amazing. And guys like G2 are really visionary, making sure that we are delivering what we said we would. The second thing we've done is combine tactically immediately things like Thousand Eyes and, and together That's with ITSI. Right. You can see us with the XDR and you know a Splunk, a Talus. Uh, we have all these adapters that connect to various things. Today we announced you know, at the keynote Meraki, Catalyst. So it's a fast and furious integration of what we're doing. And then the other thing that's happening is we are already working on some very interesting things about how Splunk so it becomes a key part of everything Cisco. Yeah. Really unlock the value of what you can do with, with, with Cisco devices, as well as start to combine all that together with, with Splunk into a really you know, holistic overall correlated view. So this has been just, I think, yeah. astonishing how well it's gone. Uh, fingers crossed, you know, it's just, just been really, really good. Yeah, so I'm gonna put you on the spot here. Yeah. Um, I know you love all your children uh, the same, but but I, what are some of the what are some of the things that excite you most about the synergy? I mean, you, you did talk about the yeah. integration points yeah. uh, that are there, but but what else it gets you going? Yeah. Here? A little bit about me. I'm a data guy, so usually that's what keys me off. And if you think about it, is I would say a chunk of the world's machine data flows through Cisco and arguably with Splunk. That combination. Yeah is just, to me, is beyond exciting. Just think about it. You've got you know, this, this ability to look at machine data, start to correlate it, start to build a view end-to-end -end of the entire network. By the way, Splunk is great at dialing in not just Cisco data, but third party as well. So it's all the data that you have in your Cisco infrastructure right. combined with, let's say, I don't know, Palo Alto or CrowdStrike or Juniper, whatever it is, into one view which on top of it, you can start figuring out what happened. Was there lateral movement attacks? Was this a problem with infrastructure? You know, and we can talk more and more about what all that enables, but that is, I think, this data, what you call a fabric of data, is most interesting to me. I think it's fascinating. Pretty much knew you were a data guy, um, not just because of the T-shirt, sure, yeah. uh, but because of the three sensors you're wearing to monitor yeah. your health data. That's right. So you're pretty much a data guy. I mean, I kind of have three, and actually I only have two. Yeah. I'm not a, as much as a data guy, but yeah. it was, it's good to see. You don't monitor your stress with an app. 
and decide how you feel. Well, I kind of do. It's and it's, do. it's uh, right on the that. face. <laughs> he actually like he looks happy. I'm like, but the watch says I'm sad, so <laughs> I'm gonna be sad. Look, that's very much a data. That's my AI tells. By the way, right now I'm very low stress. Yeah, so that's good. I just mm -hmm. want to let you all know. Well, yeah. That's why we're having fun here. The Splunk acquisition, though, also really rounded out a portfolio. I mean, when you kind of think about the big picture, right? The the idea of really AI era, right? Mm -hmm talked about this a little on some of the other uh, other shows, but right. is that like, it's an all new architecture. Yeah. And so in the first kind of competing architecture, there was lots of data mostly to make it usable as structured. That's right. In the AI era that we've completely flipped it on its head, most data is not structured. Yeah. Um, you need to have the kind of a system that can look at data across. Yeah. So in your world though, and what you're managing, it's like the systems need to be able to see all of it. Yes. And I mean, in my opinion, that is probably the biggest key to winning in this particular case, you, know, you mentioned CrowdStrike, you mentioned another thing, it's yeah. like no, no enterprise is homo homogeneous. It's not in terms right. of its data state. So that's gotta be the biggest thing on your mind right now is really, yeah. you know, there's kind of how we use data for like, you know, the, the, the productivity side. We yeah. talk a lot about that, LLMs yeah, and applications, yeah, yeah, yeah. but your world is all about all the data I that enables agree. you to, you know. So let me ask that in a couple of parts. Part one, I think is, you know, being able to get at all the data, right? When we think about it, data, as you said, is everywhere. It happens to be, and sometimes you think about data puddles or data ponds or data lakes, right? We love those. <laughs> I love those, indeed. <laughs> Last time I walked in a data puddle, I don't know what happened. But anyway, <laughs> to get these things. Uh, and in these kinds of environments, the key is not trying to get the data to the compute, to Splunk, but get the compute to the data. So you heard a little bit in the keynote today about what we're trying to do there really is this notion of federation, which means we federate the data, no matter where it is, we, without moving it, and start to correlate it inside Splunk. We form the index, we can correlate, we can analyze, we can search, but it allows us to scale in this new world where you know, data is literally everywhere. So it becomes really important uh, as a thing to think about uh, that, that we can do. The second thing, which is a little bit more forward looking, and I just start you know, riffing a bit here, is that you talked about the, the world where you know, there, there's LLMs, and all, they all want text. Yeah. Text data, you know, Wikipedia, whatever, I think that's done. The world is out of the dead data is finished. No more poetry to be written, no more haikus you can create. But machine data, the machine data is untapped. There are petabytes and petabytes and petabytes. And Cisco and Splunk together, I would argue, is the world's largest you know, source repository of machine data. So what we can enable there, new kinds of AI, new kinds of models, that I think is the future and, and that's super exciting. Yeah, the amount of data coming in, I mean, some people forget there's, you know, 300 million Cisco endpoints right. out there just with its, its security software. Yeah. And then if you look at the industrial edge and what Cisco does on the networking side and all that data being moved yeah. uh, back and forth, the amount of data is, is pretty amazing. And the cool part uh, about LLMs is the more data it gets, the, more. the smarter it gets, and the better it can activate and knows it knows what to do and, and to see patterns yeah. more quickly than ever. Having GPUs on the edge in your networking equipment doing some of these things is is is, is impressive. And um, on the federated side, over. Uh, over a period of time, history always shows that the compute ends up going to the data. Absolutely. You just have to be able to manage it effectively yeah. to be able to do something with it and pull it together. And if you have fast networking, the ability to move the data or let's say snapshots, characterization of that data, you can do some amazing stuff. Um, you announced some enhancements to digital resilience right. uh, recently and, and I'm curious, uh, what's new? Uh, yeah. And if you could turn up the contrast ratio, you know, sometimes analysts, we, get, we go to conferences, you know, I was on the road yeah. 42 weeks a year, probably attended 50 conferences. Sometimes it all kind of starts to sound similar. Yeah, yeah. But look. <laughs> right? We only go to like a thousand events a year. No, I know, yeah. I know. Make it different. <laughs> All right, let's start with. <laughs> Turn up the contrast ratio yeah, yeah, yeah. on digital resilience. No let's, pressure. And no vivid pressure. the color of some more. Saturation also exactly. goes Exactly, use yeah, that yeah. data. Yeah, let's do that. So there are a few things that we talked about. You know, uh, some are just, I would say, you know, economically makes sense. So if we think about it, you know, firewall data yeah. is a huge source of um, you know, what goes into Splunk. And you know, people ask us, like, hey, you know, I'm a Cisco customer, you're a Splunk guy, what do I get out of it? Right. So today we announced essentially free ingestion of firewall logs into Splunk. Right. Some caveats to it, but you know, 
But it's a big deal. And we heard that like, when it's announced, there was a like, spontaneous massive applause. And you know, that sort of sets the stage for yeah. what happens when these two companies to come together. There is value from Cisco data being special. And the firewall logs are the first instantiation of that. So that was a, that was a big uh, announcement. That I did hear did. that cheer. Right? That was a yeah, pretty, pretty interesting. Yeah, and I was like, should I be cheering too? I yeah. think I should. Let's and, do and, and you said that there's no, <laughs> there is no AI in that. They're still cheering. So what, what right. the heck, right? I mean, yeah. So that's a, that was a big deal. The second interesting announcement, which I think is really if you think about, you know, about 50% or you know, maybe less of what Splunk customers do is on-premises, right? So then we are in the cloud, obviously, we're a big sure. cloud provider. Um, but when you're on-premises, you now need to get hardware, you need to get Splunk, you need to get support, you know, figuring out the procurement, the sales, the support, the configuration is complicated. And what we announced today is this notion of a Splunk pod, yeah. right? This is this pre-configured reference architecture where you can go to uh, Cisco and say, give me a UCS uh, server, set of servers, here's the reference, and you buy it from one company and, yeah. some, and if something happens, it's all there. You don't have to right. go to four different things. So that's a big deal. Yeah. And over time, that'll become more and more automated. So what you'll see is, you know, that's becoming, I would say, turnkey, almost like cloud-like on-premises. Right. And for our Splunk customers, that's a big deal. And again, you heard some interesting cheers there. Yeah, it's the easy button. Yeah. I mean, you know, UCS has always been the easy, you had that inner site. That's and right. Now you're, you're adding this to observability. Right. It makes sense. Yeah. So, and yeah. those two. And the third thing which got pretty interesting uh, reactions was we, we are in, into Cisco observability, uh, Splunk, which is Cisco, obviously, observability, yeah. uh, and um, uh, ITSI, our IT service uh, intelligence applications, we are providing uh, direct native support for Meraki and Catalyst data as well. So it was pretty big. So those are three sort of uh, interesting things. And the fourth one, uh, which is, I think, very relevant to this, all this AI discussion that we're having, is if you think about it, you know, AI is you know, burgeoning. And there are special applications. LLMs are different. Agents are different. And how do you observe them? So observability for hmm. AI hmm. that knows how to understand you know, vector databases, knows how to understand LLMs, GPUs, all those things, that's something we announced today. And you know, we'll obviously keep refining that, but it's a pretty big deal for anyone who's got a big investment in AI infrastructure. You definitely did turn up the contrast ratio. Yeah. Well, there we go. Yeah. Even Dan understands it now. Do it okay. again. All right. <laughs> All right. Go backwards? Maybe. So let's sort of pull this all together. Yeah. You know, you covered a lot of the announcements you made. Yeah. AI, right? We started the conversation. Yep. We're going to end there. All this data, uh, all this machine data is going to create a, great, a number of great opportunities. Yep. You know, talk a little bit about how you, leading the Splunk uh, yep. business in its future, are thinking about AI innovation and kind of what do you see for the AI roadmap yep. ahead for, for the business? I'll talk about it in sort of four parts. Part one is this notion of AI to help with resilience, help with security, help with observability. And these Topics, these, these technolo technologies are complicated. They're conceptually hard, like SPL, and, and you know, if, you, if you ever tried using it, it's, it's not easy. And so AI can make it conceptually easier with, with these agents, agentic software assistance. Think about you know, making it more automated, you know, a, a, a agentic SOC. Like those are the kinds of things that we're delivering. And that's sort of the AI for yeah. digital resilience. The second part, what I just talked about before, is resilience for AI. Hmm. AI is complicated. AI is special. It has to be secured. It has to be observed. Right. So that's the second part, which is you know resilience for AI. And a third part is sort of in the native part of something like Splunk, just transparently using AI to make it just easier. So for example, Splunk people do extracting fields. They try to understand what is what. And so just make it automatic with AI. There's this notion of schema drift. You connect up a thing, and the schema changes because mm -hmm. the source. AI can recognize that, make it automatic. Take away the burden of running something like Splunk. You know, we have this thing called machine learning toolkit, always been there, hook it up with LLMs. Yeah. So that all makes that all easier. And the last part, what I talked about before, and that's sort of more in the future, is this notion of unlocking machine data hmm. as a source of new kinds of AI models. So this is sort of our direction. Ultimately, look, Splunk helped many people make the transition when we got into sort of digital systems. Yeah. Telemetry was difficult to handle. We sort of unlocked it. As you make the transition to AI systems, we'll do the same exact thing. But here, the scale is 10x. And so we'll have AI to help with that as well. 
And so just think about it as you know, that next generation of Splunk with the next generation of AI that our customers are using. Makes sense. Well, Kamal, that's all very, very exciting. I want to thank you so much for spending some time My with pleasure. us here. Thank you so much. Cisco Live, very yeah. impressive event. Yeah. Congratulations on the role. Thank you. Good luck. We'll be, we'll be tracking you. Thank you so much, and I'll be tracking you. Thanks a you. lot. <laughs> <laughs> appreciate right. it. Thank, thank you. Much. AI for us and us for AI. And T-shirts for you. Don't forget exactly. that. Yeah. Track those T-shirts to my door. <laughs> I got it. Got it. it. And thank you, everybody, for joining us for this episode of the 6.5 On the Road. We are here in San Diego at Cisco Live 2025. We appreciate you being part of the community. Hit subscribe. Look at all of the coverage here from the event. But for this one, we got to say goodbye. See you all later.